Hello and welcome to The After Effect. This is a mini cow for three weeks um, brought to you by Sisters in Stitch. Uh, it's a scrap yarn project um, created by Therese Eghult or Tess as you know her from Sisters in Stitch. Um, she used the uh, used inspiration that she got from the butterfly effect and created this pillow. So that's what we're doing. Um, as you can see, mine's not stretching out. It'll be stretching out more like that when it's done on a, on a, or when you put it on a cushion. Um, but I'm here to show you um, week one. Um, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna make this medallion and fasten it here with the others. Um, now, Tess has made this uh, in one color. Um, as you can see, I'm not. Um, I'm making it in, in uh, several colors. Um, well, that's not really correct. She's not doing the whole thing in one color, but every medallion has been in one color for her. But I'm changing it around a bit and doing the middle parts in different colors. Um, now, as this is a scrap yarn project, uh, if you have uh, any yarn over from your butterfly effect, this is perfect. Obviously you can use any yarn, but you know, we obviously want you to use what we've done. Um, anyways, I'm gonna start um, by showing you how to do the middle bit. This is obviously the start of the butterfly effect, so if you've done that, you'll be familiar with this whole part. Um, what's gonna be different is the joining and uh, so basically round four. But I'll meet you back here for round one. There we are, round one. Um, this will be just like in the butterfly effect, the beginning part of butterfly effect. And um, so I don't know if should I just get started. I will let you tell you the way that Tess has written it. She's done so that you don't actually have to to fasten off for each round. If you know me, I prefer to do that. However, I'll show you uh, how to not do that and some tricks that I when I've been sitting making these medallions that I've uh, done um, to make things easy for me. You don't have to copy me, you can do it exactly as you want. So like before I've said, you don't have to do a magic circle, I'm doing a magic circle uh, and chaining one. Whoops, I was off to a brilliant start. Um, I'm closer to the table now than I was when I did the butterfly effect because obviously Flora is now out. Peanut is now Flora and Flora is out of my belly, which means I'm closer to the table. See if I can do this as nicely as I did when Flora was with me. So we're doing eight single crochets in a magic circle. So let's start one, two, three, whoop, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, and I do warn you, I might have to go, oh, I'll be right back, because that's Flora waking up and then I have to run off. But we'll just have to make do, right? That's what happens when you're a mom and you're trying to do things. Okay, so uh, join with a slip stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So join, whoops, join with a slip stitch there. Um, this is still round one, because if you remember from the butterfly effect, doing the eight single crochets is kind of at the beginning so it didn't really count it as a round. Now you're doing a three double crochet cluster. So that's three uh, double crochets together in the same stitch and we're doing eight of those because we've got eight stitches and I'm starting with my standing um, <sighs> standing double crochets doing that and then obviously two more double crochets before completing the stitch. Okay, so you'll have four, you see you'll have four uh, loops on your hook. I haven't done this for a while, I'm noticing. Okay, and then we're chaining two and doing the same thing in the next stitch. 
Yeah, so you'll have to excuse me if I'm a bit rusty. I haven't done this, obviously now, for weeks because Flora was born on the 27th of March and um, the cow actually completed two days after that. <laughs> so I was a bit, uh, not that I think we did actually do a live and she joined us for the live, but um, yes. It's amazing, when I started doing all these tutorials, I was very pregnant and now I'm very not pregnant. Uh, it's, it's a very strange, um, strange thing sitting here again and talking to myself, but actually talking to you and all of that. Anyways, I'm really excited about this cushion. I, one of the things Sisters and Stitch stands for is that we love creativity and that we want creativity to breathe creativity and um, that's why I'm so happy that Tess called me when I said I've done this cushion pillow so really exciting and um, it'd be nice to see what other people might come up with because obviously the butterfly effect is a free pattern so you are as long as you're not claiming it to be yours you're fine to be adapting and making, having fun with it. Okay, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, we've done six, we're doing two more, and then I'm actually gonna fasten off. And obviously I can show, I'm gonna show you how to start the next round without fastening off, um, but I will fasten off because I'm making, I'm bringing white uh, into this medallion after this. Um, but let's do two more clusters. So how have you been? Been good since last time? <laughs> Let's see, one, two, three, like that. So now we should have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, okay. So, um, I'm obviously gonna cut the thread and fasten this. I'll show you both ways actually. Um, now to, fat, to do a slip stitch, you'll be able to see, it's a bit hard, but the top stitch of this is actually over here. Um, it's a little bit hard to see actually, just generally because it's twisted into the beginning of it. But just like you can see on the top of this cluster, you've got your two chains there and you've got the stitch over here. So two chains and then the stitch is over here, it's a bit twisted, which is fine. So if you're doing a slip stitch to continue, I would go through there, do your slip stitch. And for your next round, so it'll look like that. The thing is, for your next round, you're starting off with a front post double crochet. Now, some people do chain, um, I think most people chain all the time when, when you're about to start an, another round. I don't always do that. So if you want to chain one, go right ahead and do that. Um, that's absolutely fine. I just have a tendency not to. Um, I don't know what, why, and it depends on obviously the situation, but for this one, I probably won't. But I'll show you, um, because if you're starting off with a front post, I just go straight into doing the front post like that um, and then doing your next stitches, okay? Um, because you'll get the height of it anyways. Um, if that's how you want to do it, that's what you should do. Now, obviously I'm not doing that, so I will be cutting my thread. Let me get some scissors. Um, I'll be cutting my thread because that's the last I'm doing with the yellow. Um, because the thing is, obviously, I've done quite a few of these medallions already. I'll show you. See, I have learned. I've done all of them. <laughs> um, now, to fasten this, you've already got your two two chains there. Um, I'll do. I'm going to do an invisible join. And obviously I want to cover this because we've already, we've got the two chains there. So I go into the first chain and that's where I do my join. So I'm covering, covering this stitch here. Going back in that one. So I'll be able to show you here. So as you can see, it'll be, um, looks a bit twisted now, hang on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did 
that end up there. Oh, hang on. Sorry, I need to actually put it in the wrong place. It's always good when you do it wrong because then people see, oh, that's not how you're supposed to do it. Okay, I'll show you. You're supposed to go in, obviously, the other side of that. Okay, so you can see that when I pull on this tightly, it's like a stitch. So you can see your chains and then that covering stitch there. Now, uh, fastening, and then I'll meet you back for round two, right? Excuse if I get, uh, you have to excuse me if I get confused. I'm blaming it on Flora, mommy brain. Um, I'll be right back. Hello and welcome back for round two. Um, we're starting with a standing stitch. Um, and as you can see, we're going to be doing a repeat of eight. So front post, single crochet around the cluster, and then two single crochets in the chain two space. So not too difficult. So uh, I'm going to start off um, with a front post single crochet around that cluster, just like that. And my single, I just start them off. I don't attach anywhere. I just, it's a standing, so I just start it. Um, one, two in the chain, single crochets and then front post single crochet around the cluster. And we just do that around the whole uh, center. And that's gonna be round two. So it's actually pretty straightforward little round doing that. And as you know, if you've seen the butterfly effect or followed any of, of the things that me and Tess uh, do together, You'll know that I'm a tight crochet. I crochet everything very tightly, and test does not. <laughs> so uh, our pillows might look very different um, when they're actually finished. And I think I'm going to have to add larger borders to to be able to get it as large as I want it, really. Um, but that's all good. So okay, um, as you can see, two more single crochets like that okay Whoop. and that's um, your round two so front post and then two uh, single crochets now um, as I'm not gonna now gonna continue with my white yarn um, I am doing a slip stitch in that first standing like that and there we go, I'm going to meet you back for round three. Welcome back for round three. Um, that was just a pause stop for me and then, then start again. Now, because uh, this is a standing stitch and we're doing a half double crochet, let's have a look at the pattern first. We're doing a half double crochet and they're going to land on all of, uh, of the front post. Uh, stitches, which is I think a good landmark because it does help you to know oh where, I'm, where am I at um, and after that we're doing uh, in these two uh, single crochets first we're doing two double crochets chaining two and then two double crochets got another half double and then we're doing a single crochet chaining one and then a single the next one and that's what we do uh, re repeated four times to get your corners now to do a standing um because i want to thing is i want to start in this front post stitch now some people might do this differently as i said but when i was sitting doing all of these things because as you know i've done a few of them now i was thinking how am i going to do this uh, simply with this standing uh stitch and this is what i've done okay so i twist it um i turn the whole thing like that Oops, sorry, turn the whole thing like that. One, uh, three, sixty degrees, I guess. Um, and if you hear noise now, it's my husband sneaking into the kitchen because I'm sitting in the kitchen today. Um, in any case, when you've twisted that, it's like doing a standing. Actually, not standing, but when you do um, uh, when you're doing um, back and forth. Um, and you don't want to have a turning chain. This is kind of the same thing and I didn't want to have a turning chain So I'm doing this. So I've twisted it once which means uh, this has been wrapped around My hook once and then I go into this same stitch that I actually did the slip stitch in 
pull up my yarn and do a single crochet, okay? And when I've done that single crochet, as you can see, it's got the two little legs at the front. You go in to the one on your left, go in there. It might be tricky the first time, like that. So you've got two loops on your hook, pull over your yarn, and you do a single crochet again, all right? Just because I'm doing this on camera, it's harder, like that. Because uh, that's how you do the half uh, double crochet without turning chain. So that's what I'm doing. So that's how I'm doing my standing stitch for this. Um, basically. I'm trying to think if that would have been, sorry I'm thinking now at the same time. Yarn over, go under and just pull through all three. Yeah, that might, might work well as well. Should we try it once? Let's try it. I like trying things. Um, okay, so we've done this. Should we twist it back then? Yeah, we've done that. So what the other way would be doing a standing like that, going through, pulling up, and going through all three. Now see, I think that's messy. No, that's, that's too messy for me. Um, let's do this one again and let's see if we like that better. Okay, so I'm doing basically a no turning, so I'm <laughs> no turning but turning the whole thing around. Um, and doing a single crochet first, like that. Then going into that first, that was the left leg of it, doing another, another single crochet, okay? Like that. I think that's neater. I like it better. You can do it the way the way you want it to be. Okay, and now we're doing two. Sorry, I'm just babbling on now. Doing two double crochets in the next stitch, chaining two, and then two double crochets in the next. Whoopsie, dropping my yarn in the next stitch as well, like that. Okay, and then we should be now at that front post so in that one we're doing half double crochets remember and then after that it's a single crochet chain one single crochet like that i have to pull on my yarn anyways i'm doing it from the middle this time whole butterfly effect i didn't do it from the middle doing it from the middle is not helping me anyways <laughs> uh again half double crochet and now we just do everything again so two double crochets Chain two, and then two double crochets in the next single crochet that you've got. And now you should again be at the front post single crochet, and then that you're doing a half double, like that. You can, I'm gonna continue all the way around, I'll get with you. Um, we've done that half double, and then we're doing single chain, and then another single. I've done these so many times now that I've not been looking at the pattern, to be honest. So I'm hoping I'm not gonna do, there's no picots in this, so I won't be able to F it up like I did in the butterfly effect. But you know, you never know. <laughs> Tess might have to kill me after this. What are you doing with your pregnancy? Well, I'm not pregnancy brain, mommy brain. Um, so yes, Peanut was a girl. And I thought she was at the end, didn't I? I think I spoke about that during the butterfly effect as well, saying I think she's a girl. Uh, and she was. And I'm sitting in the room where she was born, which is quite amazing. And in the same room that Jolene was born. So it's one of those things, isn't it? We're never gonna be able to move because we have so much memories in these, this apartment that we live in. Um, there we go, half double crochet. I'm getting, I'm getting stuck in my yarn. It feels like I haven't crocheted for absolutely forever because I keep on getting stuck everywhere. Um, but hopefully I'm not too confusing. Okay, chaining two, do another two double crochets. I need a tea, I just realized. I've only had one today. Good thing about doing tutorials, by the way, is that you can't tell that I'm sitting in my PJs. Because you can't see. Okay, so after that, we're doing that last and final single crochet, and I'm gonna show you what I do next in the next round, because we're about to start round four. And now there's two different round fours. There's a 
uh, 4A, which you basically just completed because it's your first one. And then after that, you're going to be doing the uh, 4B for all of them because obviously you're going to be attaching them. Um, and I'll go through this uh, with you uh, when I come back. See you in a bit. Hello, welcome back. Um, now, <laughs> I just realized something very funny that I've been doing these wrong actually. I'm not going to be doing things wrong now, which means that we can kind of ignore what I said that I had this special thing to do because, um, well, mommy brain has really um, played tricks on me. So uh, let's do a little uh, slip stitch on top of uh, the previous round um, so that we can start this round four okay as i said with 4a you're going all the way around and with 4b you are doing exactly the same as round uh, 4a however um when you do your chain twos you'll be doing a chain one and then slip stitching um to fasten your medallion to the rest of them um so let me start off by doing one repeat of of uh, what 4a is going to be okay so you've done uh done your you've fastened your uh round so let's do back post uh we're doing obviously starting off with a back post single crochet and this is where i went uh wrong because <laughs> i'd managed to do um <laughs> uh single crochets in the back loop for my other ones don't ask me why i am actually blaming flora and this is kind of why you have kids isn't it um but in any case you do three back post single crochets like that okay uh when you've done that we are at this corner you're doing a single crochet chaining two and then a single crochet another three back post single crochets that okay and then we are skipping the single crochet and in this uh, chain one here we are doing the following in brackets one half double two doubles chaining two two doubles, like that, two doubles, and then a half double at the end of that, okay? And that means that we're back, we've done our first repeat. Now, if you do this um, three more times, um, you'll obviously have completed 4A, um, but I'm gonna continue to uh, fasten this, uh, this medallion to the other ones now, okay? Now, the medallion is fastened in uh, in the corners for this this middle part that we just did. Um, so the first one I'm gonna have is over here. So it will be like this, um, that it will be fastened, okay? So it's when you pull and stretch these, you'll see that you'll get these nice gaps and everything. So we're gonna, start off by fastening this one here that one here and the one that we're making here is going to be fastened here and then those two as well now when you're doing this uh, can, uh fastening them to more than one because obviously when you're doing one you're just doing uh three of them um it's good to know that you're going to be fastening this one in that one this one is fastened in this one this one will be fastened in this one, and this one again in that one. So you're doing it diagonally like that. Um, so it's good to know. Do have a look at uh, pictures and everything, because they will be very clear if you think I'm not. Um, but, oh, excuse me. Goodness sake. Um, I just sneezed. Bless me. Okay. Um, so we're back to doing uh, three back posts. Uh, single crochet so let's do those three first like that yes and obviously um, we're in a, in a corner we'll do a single 
oops, single crochet and chain two and then a single crochet. Do those uh, three back posts in this one and now we're gonna fasten everything. So one, two and then three. Like that. So we've got that one, two, and a three. And we're fastening it one, two, and three. So um, you start off by doing uh, what's in the brackets. So one half double, two doubles, like that. And you sh and, and when you're doing A, you're chaining twice. You're doing that here as well, but you're dividing it, dividing it up. So you, do, you chain one. Now you take your hook out go in through where you're fastening this so let's be doing this this way around grab the yarn uh, and put, put it through there and do a slip stitch so you fasten it you can pull it quite tightly and then because uh, then it will be stuck there and then you do your second chain and continue again so two double crochets and one half double like that okay so we've fastened that and now we're doing three back posts again oh yeah sorry we're skipping the single crochet and as you can see you kind of cover the single crochet with all of these stitches so it's very easy just count if you if you find it hard to look count from the corner so you see one stitch two stitch and that's the third so um, we're doing three back posts single crochets after skipping that stitch Maybe I wasn't clear for the first uh, first part over here that you were doing that. Sorry. Um, and again, we're going to be fastening this now over here. So you do one single crochet in that in the chain two space. Again, you chain one, put it off your hook, go through the space, the chain two space in the in the in the medallion previously. Slip stitch that and then do another single one, no, another chain, and then a single crochet. So you fasten that. Again, we're doing three back post single crochets. So one, two, and three, okay? Now again, we're at this middle bit here. Uh, so in the chain one, you skip one stitch, and then in the chain one space, you do half double, Two doubles, two doubles. I'm actually starting to run out of yarn, I just realized. Uh, chain one, let it go. And now obviously you want to go through that one. So you're doing it diagonally. Just go through that, pick up your yarn, go through it again and do a tight slip stitch so it's attached. You do another chain like that and continue doing your two double crochets and your sorry and your half double in that same chain one spot now you again skip the single crochet and do uh, skip the single crochet and do three back post single crochets like that so one two and three. It's always a bit harder when you've got the whole thing coming with you like this. <laughs> but um, that's what happens, isn't it? And we're doing one single crochet, chain one, let go of, uh, of the yarn, go through this one, uh, grab the yarn again, go through and slip stitch that so it's stuck, and then another chain, and another single crochet. So actually I shouldn't be looking at mine here because as you can tell this one is a little bit different than the other ones. Uh, but yes, bomby brain. God, it is actually a thing. I didn't think it was with the other two. Um, do another three back post single crochets like that. Like that, okay. And now we're at this final part here. So you do 
your half double, do your two double crochets like that, chain one, and now you'll be fastening it in this diagonally here. So go through that one and pick it up and pick it up like that. Slip stitch, do a chain and then finish off doing the two double crochets like that and then a half double. And that is you done. So uh, when you've done that uh, I would cut the yarn and do an invisible join until, over the next stitch so it's seamless um, and as you can see it's going to look really 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 pretty um, and you continue doing this just keep on fastening till you've got your 25 or depending on how many you want to do depending on what you're actually doing you might be doing a huge pillow and have like 50 of them I don't know but uh, continue to do that um, and then next week I'm going to meet you back for part two and that's part one done well if you imagine that there's more of them you know it's nice to be back it's nice to see you guys again and uh, I hope you had a good time for any information that you need um, for charts or for uh, pictures and, and also the written pattern, please do go to sistersandstitch.com um, where you can find everything you need. Um, thank you again, Tess, for making this amazing scrap yarn project. It's so much fun. This has been the After Effects part one, and I'll see you back next time.